up, everybody? This is Mark Jackson here, and I have my guest here. You know who he is, Mr. Malik Joe. Bro. You say the name, Mr. Malik Joe. Welcome, brother. How are you? Oh, man, I'm good. Good to see you. Not much better. Mark. Fun. Yes, sir. Have some fun here. North Philly's own. You know, hey, you know, North, North, North represents North. You know, the Iron Shore resigned, hey, brother. North Sider is a North Sider. There it is, bro. North Side dude when you see a North Side dude, man, wherever you at. Exactly. So, those you don't know, Malik Joe is a big time IG TikTok guy. He just, he represented, he, to me, when I first seen it was when I seen the clips with the Eagles, you do a Hertz, yeah. you do the bartenders, like, you do it all. Like, how did you get started in that? So, uh, back when I was doing, like, uh, the bartender stuff, mm -hmm. I made this one little video, like, uh, basically, like, if you if you know Surfer Life words, it's like, I'm like, behind, behind, I'm just screaming behind, and, like, it went crazy on social media. I'm like, and, like people are like, man, you, you're kind of funny, man, you should, you should keep making videos. I just... I kind of just kept making videos, and I guess like all the class clowns I got at Gillespie <laughs> every year and at Gratz every year actually came to work out. So I just started doing that, and then like I've always worked in like a, you know a brunch setting, so I never really had off on Sundays. And this is my uh, first year fully having off on Sundays. I'm going tailgate galore. I'm going crazy. So <laughs> you know they just start putting a camera on me. We going tailgate galore. We asking questions, and you know I had this little TV show idea called Fly John Fly. Yep. I wanted to do that, you know, get the interviews going. I wanted to do a lot more with it than what I did with it, but, you know, it was what it was. And, you know, pretty much that's how I got started. And then once once AJ Brown hit me up on Instagram, it was it was a wrap. It was really up after that. Let's talk about that. Like, we when you go, when you get first met AJ and y'all y'all rapped, and I'm, I seen a thing where you explained, you gave him the gift of my open sound, which yeah. was freaking hilarious. Yeah, it was crazy. It was but, crazy. like, before that, when you was... How did you come up with the theory, like, doing each player? Because sometimes you do them multiple characters with four or five guys in a huddle. Yeah. And then at the end, when, like, Jalen said, y'all know what player it is, it's running. Like, how did you come up with that, that concept? Uh, so, like, I'm, I guess I'm just already far-fetched in my mind where I come up with the funny part. But, like, it's generally because, I mean, you see how the game go. You already know what's kind of going to happen. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I just oversimplify, you know, put a little spin on it, make it a little bit more yeah. funny. And, like, you know... AJ Brown name was 1K always open. So I'm like, yeah, and he, yeah pretty much he pretty always, much always open. open. He always open. <laughs> I mean, off season, he probably somewhere right now open. And um, I was like, damn, I probably, I got a good idea. So my initial idea was to make a video as me being Jalen Hurts and me being AJ Brown uh -huh. and me giving Jalen Hurts a gift, as in me playing Jalen Hurts. Yeah, yeah. It would have been the open sign. And I'm like, Man, boy, know me, man. I'm gonna go ahead and give him the open sign. Exactly. Man, I'm gonna go bring it to the horse. <laughs> I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna bring it to him. So, so I went there the first game. I, uh -huh. I I didn't actually give it to him because he was like he was in game mode. He was locked in. He had his you know uniform on and everything. So I'm like, all right, I gotta come a little bit earlier when they any warm ups. Came a little bit early in the warm-ups. I see Brett Selleck upstairs. Shout out to Brett Selleck. I see Brett Selleck upstairs. He's like, what are you doing? I'm putting this box together because I had to smuggle it in. I had like, Yeah, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I want to know how'd you get it in there. <laughs> and I get the box together. I take it down. And, you know, I gave it to him. And he was, it was like we saw, it was like cousins that we ain't seen each other in a minute, man. It was, she was cheesing. I was cheesing. Oh, my God, it was bro. Dope. It, was, it was a good vibe, man. It was so, that, was, that was great. That took my career to the next level. Facts. Because, you know, everybody know in Philly, when it comes to the Eagles, you know, we have a lot of things, but we got the Eagles, we got the Sixers, and we got boxing. Okay, the Flyers, Box. Phillies, absolutely. But, you know, when you're growing up, you know three things, football, basketball, and boxing. Like, I don't care where you're from, our part of Philly from, you know those three components. And then you learn about soccer and, and baseball as you, I mean, uh, as you get older, and Flyers, you know. Yeah. But boxing, basketball, and football, that's our thing. For sure. So, it's now, once you Philly. did that, once you did that, you, you got you successful – you pretty much mission completed. So after you did that, that tell me like, how did your relationship start changing with players, organizations, like anybody? How do you think? Have you had any run-ins or conversations with people in the organization, like front office people? And how many conversations with players? Not in depth. Like, what is you? What is your vibe? What's your feedback from them? So like, I get a lot. I had a lot of conversation more from the player aspect. Like, okay. like, I feel like the players are more like freelance and like, so they they're like, oh, you know, like, oh, this guy's putting out good content. Like, this is funny. Like, he's helping us. Like, kind of, you know, go for yeah. it. You know I mean, like, it's just funny. Yeah. Apparently, the whole locker room was looking at it. So then, Miles Sanders followed me. So I'm like, all right, it's really on now. And then, uh, uh, Gardner Johnson, shout out to Gardner Johnson. He he hit me up on TikTok. And it was just like, oh, man, like, all the players just vibe with me. But nobody from, like, the front office or nobody ever, like, hit me up for anything at all. Really? But, like, you know, I that's, know they, that's coming. It's that's coming. coming I, I know that's they coming. see it, and I know it's coming. And you, you, can't, you can't, like I said, you can't stop Malik Joe. You can, you can only hope to contain him. You can't put a, <laughs> you can only, you can try to put a ceiling on me. It ain't going to work. I'm going to the, I'm going to the moon, and everybody's going to pull my my way. Sure. Now, let's talk about that, about the, 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 the content, which is blowing up and right before our eyes. What? Now with the way social media is having an impact yeah. on people's lives, like you, I just listen. I was on social media ten years ago, got off of it because I had, you know, 
got them people in my DMs and it, it ain't, them conversation ain't go to. I'm like, I'm done with this. Right. And they're like, well, you gotta get back on it. So I finally got back on it. And now I'm starting to do stuff, but I'm watching you and watching how things taking off. Yeah. When it, so did COVID kind of push you into that, that mode or did you just kind of, what made you say social media, let me be on it? I know you had the, the thing you did at the bar, but what kind of influenced you to kind of go that route? So I always believed, like just myself, if you mm -hmm. stay consistent at anything, no matter what the thing is, mm -hmm. stay consistent and have somewhat of good quality, people gonna move out your way. Mm. And whatever I did, whatever it was football, whether it was boxing, whatever it was, whatever obstacle was in my in my path, in whatever room I was in, I was the captain of that room. Mm. So whatever I, I moved to, whatever room I'm in. So you know, we on the court. I'm I'm six five now. What's up? <laughs> What's up? No, <laughs> no, like so. When I was doing the social media stuff, I was getting crazy response from it, like, you know, crazy feedback. And I'm like, well, in my head, if some, this is how my head works. If somebody, if, let's just say they make another movie like Waiting, and which uh -huh. is like a, a movie surrounded around like, you know, server life bartender. Who do you think the first person they're going to call? It's going to be me. Facts. You get what I'm saying? And, and if, you know, if somebody make a, a movie about, you know, whack, wacky, you know, Eagles fans and stuff like that. Who the first person they gonna call? Yeah, me. The person they you know see the person they see the most. Yeah, and, and it's not like I need an end goal for for that. And that I just know staying consistent, it's gonna open up and the opportunities that I want and the things that I because I love doing that. Like the you know the social media, I love being creative. I love being able to reinvent myself. And like you said, you've been on my page and you've seen me yeah. do so many stuff when it comes to North Philly bartending, the Street Fighter series, the uh, the Alien series, the the Eagles, the sitting like. I, I, I can reinvent myself a million times out of yep. ten. Maybe because I'm a WWE baby. Shout out to WWE. Ah, but, don't know nothing about that. Don't know nothing <laughs> yeah, about, about that. Don't know nothing about that. Y'all might not know this part about my guy. My, you know, my man could throw hands. All right, that's a Philly thing too. No disrespect to all the city, but you're Philly. You gotta, you gotta, you you born and you raised. You gotta be able to throw them hands. My man got some information a lot of people don't know. So tell me, people people might know you was a, a licensed professional boxer. Yeah. But it started before that. Started before that. Tell me about the Muay Thai. Tell them okay. about it. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the story. <laughs> so one day, I'll give you a quick version. One day, uh, I came home from college, you know, just like most people did. And what you know, college was that? This was Liberty University. Okay. Did not finish. All right, I'm not perfect. Nobody. Hey, everybody judging. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> so, Me either. Uh, yeah, yeah, right? So <laughs> it is what it is. Um, and I'm like, you know, thinking, of what's the next step for Malik Joe? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I'm always, you know, very, once once I get my hands in it, I'm going full in. So, you know, my man was like, yo, we went to the gym. We went to the gym. It was a boxing gym. Eddie okay. Alvarez, power gym. Shout out to Eddie Alvarez. Um, Philadelphia Fight Sports, and we went there. And my first day, I was already, you know, I was pretty well. I'm mean, athletic, you know, I ain't trying, you know, to gloat. <laughs> but you know, I went in there and I did pretty well. And they're like, "Yo, man, you you think about giving like doing this?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure. Like, I would love to, like, you know, try it out or whatever." Yep. And uh, I had really good hip flexors, so I could throw head kicks real tight. Like, if we could be like right really? here, and I could throw a head kick real tight. Like, I can I hit you in it like easily. Um, really? My, my pants okay. might be too tight right from right now. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need no, we don't need no towels. <laughs> but yo, so so I got into the Muay Thai work, and uh, shout out to Romney, shout out to Romney Elite, and like we just took it to the next level. And I, you know, I just was doing Muay Thai heavy, and then we had this USA versus Canada event in 2013. Um, Anthony Galino, shout out to him, and I fought this guy named I think Jamil Morgan, and I won my first international gold medal there. So hold on, you you weren't like this young. You was just oh no, I started at. 19. I started at 19. And they put you in the ring. Like, oh, yeah, come try this. Yeah, By the way, you have a fight coming up. Right. First fight was at the Valley Forge Casino. I was mad that fight, but, you know, that was the first fight I ever fought. I was angry. I was hot. I <laughs> crashed, ball. But, uh, yeah, we we just kept, I kept rolling with the punches, and I kept doing the Muay Thai. And I was really good at Muay Thai and K1. The only thing is, there's no real money in those ventures. So, okay. like, somebody got a hold of me, and he was like, yeah, Yo, you're a tough kid. Switch arts. And like you need time to do that. That's like you can't just go from rugby to football if you're gonna be the best football player. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna happen. Volleyball to basketball, it ain't gonna happen just because you can jump. You know what I mean? So yeah. I needed more time to develop to be a, a really successful professional boxer. In which I you know I should have took a you know time back and did that. But Muay Thai, let's lock, I'm locked and loaded. <laughs> really, art of eight limbs, baby. Ready to ride home. <laughs> <laughs> so now, so that was a, in a gym in Philly. When you yeah, did Muay Thai. Eddie Alvarez, shout out to Eddie Alvarez. Wow. Yeah. And then you went to boxing. So how how many professional Muay Thai fights you had? How many? How many? And then how many boxing matches you went? So you said it's good different. I actually never had a professional Muay Thai fight. We just had we had okay. a whole bunch of amateurs. Well, amateurs I'm sorry. Yeah, a whole bunch of amateurs in international. Probably like thirteen and five, a couple championship okay. fights, and then. I turned into a pro boxer. So I never had a pro professional kickboxing match because the avenue of 
for now the avenue for Philadelphia for you know professional kickboxing mm -hmm. Muay Thai is somewhat growing. Okay. Back okay. Then, no, it was if you ain't a boxer, it's Philadelphia. You got to be a boxer. You know what I'm saying? Like Back. we're not trying to hear none of that. Shit. <laughs> oh, karate, get in there and throw hands. You know what I mean? For sure. And which is which is which is fine. Like I would have been good if I would have started if I would have started at 19 and then started boxing and then came pro when I did when I did it. Then exactly. It would have been perfect. But the time and a lap. You mean I literally probably. My last Muay Thai fight into my first beginning pro boxing match might have been like three months, and that's nowhere near enough time. And really? Yeah. I mean, I was tough, so like, I, you know, I could take a punch. Like, you know what I mean? You're going to have to do a lot to get me down, but yeah. Man, so, okay, so now let's, let's fast forward again, and let's, let's speed up a little bit. So now we yeah. get into your bartender. Yeah. You want to shout out to any place you worked? What do you think? Oh, shout out to every place I ever worked. Shout out to Green Ace Cafe. Shout out to Good Dog Bar. Shout out to uh, uh, Marathon Grill. Shout out to Warm Daddies, the Bottom Brothers that are doing this Warm thing out Daddies. there. Yeah. You said Warm Daddies? I worked at Warm Daddies for a little bit. Shout out to Ray Gordon. Um, yeah, I worked, I worked at all, all of those spots, and um, I, I I won't take anything that I got from them or learned from them because, you know, they, I mean, I wouldn't be here today. Facts. Yeah. So now with the bartending, then we go, now we transition back to your social media with the bartending. And if y'all don't know, his, his check him out. I don't know what's y'all favorite, but me is, is when he's so disrespectful as a bartender. Yeah. That's <laughs> you dropped your phone already three... Four times now. Just go. Just go. Just go. Take a Just go. Just go. You don't got to go home. Just go. Just go. Leave the bar. Thank you. What's up? Trash? Uh, right up right up on the chalkboard. Didn't I just tell you to get the fuck out of here? Just go. Fuck. So you did that, the bar tennis episodes, and then you have, so you have that one, you have the, the, the football one, but tell me about the ball from North Philly. So... North Bowl, a lot of people don't know who he is. Some people do. Um, North Bowl was basically, so out of my friends in North Philly, I was like the first friend out of all my North Philly friends to okay. branch out and like kind of like change the mold. I was the first person to go to college. Mm -hmm. And then after that, after that, I went to work in Center City. And like I was around more diverse people. So like I was around something that they was not used to. So I used to try to bring them down to Center City, down where we at now, and like try to, you know, like that's make, that always work out the possible. It'll always <laughs> work the possible way. So, you know, th th that's when you get all the questions. Well, how you how you talk to these people? Well, y'all got they got they got Henny Punch. Uh, they got excellent. It's like, bro, you gotta you gotta kind of know what you gotta turn it off. You know what I mean? Turn the switch. <laughs> so North Bowl is just all my friends in the one. Before they, you know, actually kind of see how the world world works, <laughs> and like, so you know, you walk into a bank, they like start up a, you know, a, a bank account for me, and they ain't got no ID. It's like, I, <laughs> what do you? <laughs> why do you only have money in your pocket, and that's it? Like, <laughs> on the mattress. Yeah, right, right. My grandmother taught me that. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, 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 exactly. On the mattress. Yeah, like you know, so like basically, North Pole was, you know, everything that you know. You from North, you yeah, know, the, the yeah. people that you know, they grew up down there, and mm -hmm. that's all they know, and they never really kind of branched out. And uh, that's North Bowl. So, like, it's a funny contrast because I'm playing both characters and most of them, if you ever see the videos, and it's, like, kind of me talking to a younger me. And it's it's kind of hilarious because people from North Philly is, like, they aliens, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So now let's talk about the cheese sticks. Yeah, we can talk about let's the cheese sticks. Let's talk about the cheese sticks. What's your favorite? Okay, what's, what's the first question is, what are the, the names, and I think we were on the same page this, the names that somebody got to say, you know they're in LA when they mention cheesesteaks, please. And then what is Malik Joe's favorite cheesesteak place? So if you're not from Philly, everybody know that, the, you know, the spots when you're not from Philly, the tourist spots, you're going to go to Geno's, you're going to go to Pat's. And there's no knock to them because we might work together later in life. So. <laughs> no knock to y'all, but, you know, y'all already know what's going on. So No offense. No offense. We love, we love no all cheesesteaks. Y'all food for the city. Y'all yeah. yeah. bringing a lot of money for that. Yeah, like, you know, bro. You know, it is what it is. But so I personally, I go to Delisandro's. Oh, okay. I might go to Max's. This is no order, by the way. Okay. And I also might go to Dolores on Two Street. Ooh. Now, Dolores on Two Street is when you want that, you know, that less of a choppy cut. You know what I'm saying? They ain't going to chop mm. it all the way up, but they're going to give you a medium chop and it's going to be a good sandwich, nice bread. And you go to Delisandro's, they're gonna make that thing like catnip. They're gonna chop it all the way up. Yeah, you know I mean, bro. so I mean that those are two. The Lures on Second Street, definitely check them out. And also Delisandro's, everybody know what that's at. So for me, my my favorite hope, and it is now it's no longer that. I mean, no disrespect, still love you, but it's not the same. It's Max's, bro. Max's bro, Neri. Bro, bro Neri. Oh, Neri. See, I gotta throw that in there because I'm born, bro, I'm born right bro, up the street. But like but listen though, they got new management, new ownership. The, the lady don't the, what's the most lady name when she had the whole staff, the line. Yeah. There's different people, man. Different people in there. It's not the same. So no offense. I love y'all. Still no Philly. We still give y'all props. 
But they didn't say it. That was my favorite. And that. I had a low. Back in the day, it used to be, the, it used to be that work back in the day. They get a little cherry pepper in there. Yeah. Little cherry pepper. You get a little cheese stick with all them cherry peppers. Let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. And then I had another one. That yeah, they got in trouble. <laughs> well, it used to be Ishii Bibbles. It's all oh, Ishii Bibbles. Bibbles. until somebody videoed outside their door at nighttime with the, the rodents running there. around. Yeah, boy. Kind of kind of knocked them back a few spots. But Ishii Bibbles. But it's it was just my thing. So Max's Ishkibos. So come on, Mark, you had a Chinese store before. Get out of here. Poppy stores? You had a Chinese store. Oh, come on, no, no, but listen, listen. It wasn't rap like back Max and his stuff last time. Okay, you were there. Rap was back there. Didn't even. Read it two out this jail. Read it two. What you want? Ten minutes. <laughs> Facts. It was good. But listen though, but that was the thing. But what about this? I got one for you. So the alien thing. But now let's talk about. People don't know in Philadelphia. I grew up, we both grew up in North Philadelphia, yeah. but two things that are synonymous to Philadelphia is the urban cowboys, which means you see horses, young boys oh, riding around on horses all around Philly, on the highway, well, forget Fairmont Park, down Broad Street, but then it's the motorcycles and the bikes. Ding, 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 ding. And he got a character named Rodney that is like a lot of my family members. So talk about that. How did you come up with Rodney and that whole dynamic? Watch up. You know I'm not sure. No, bro, you go to the next person. I'm cool. Oh, uh, Rodney, go ahead, man. I'm not catching no shrimp. Yo, stop playing me, yo. Type time you on. Uh, type time, time you on, yo. Stop. Go ahead, go ahead. Just let him do it. Go ahead, go to the next person. Go ahead. Just let him do it. Uh, so Rodney was basically the dude, no matter what's going on, he riding bike. It could be 3 o'clock on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. It's 70 degrees out, you riding the bike. We still in last period. I don't get how you got how you on the bike. You know, you see him. They got the they got the sock on the shoe. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And and that, that's a whole movement. Like my eyes, I used to never think how they meet. How did they link up? It used to be fifty of them just riding bikes, yeah. and that's how it happened. The phone call. Ming ging 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 ging. They don't even have to say nothing. They just hit the number. Ming ging 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 ging. He ming ging ging back, and it's on. That's all he do. They hang up. Ming ging ming ging ging. Hang up. <laughs> oh my god, y'all get checked that checked up. Rodney's that that yeah, guy. People yeah. in Philly. You be like, oh, Rodney. We everybody knows Rodney's in Philly, and then so then I gotta go back. I gotta go back. So now we go back to sports, to yeah. sports episodes. So now, now you start to venture. I not necessarily just do current, but I see you throwing throwbacks yeah. on the voiceovers. Throwbacks. Yeah. Who brought that on? So what happened was I was on a, another podcast, mm -hmm. uh, and we were talking about basically the voiceovers, and they okay. were like, oh my god, you're doing every character. That's pretty cool. Like. Um, are you afraid that you might pigeonhole yourself to only just Philadelphia anything? And you know me, I'm worldwide. You, like I said, you can't put a ceiling on me. You can't. <laughs> I'm universal. Uh -huh. So I'm like, yeah, I, after the Super Bowl, I will venture out into other voiceovers because shout out to Cam Newton, if you ever see this. Um, he that, that was my most viewed video. That really? Was voiceover for Cam Newton. It was like one of my most viewed videos to this day. He did like 2.5 million. And like I'm like, yo, like what cause once you branch out the other teams, now I got more venues of people that want to see, you mm. know, shout out to Coach 30. If you ever see him on Instagram, he did he do every team with the little the film room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to, so he he basically doing the same. So I kind of bit off him a little bit, like, oh, let me get because now I can grab more attention from more venues. Well, yeah. What I'm thinking is by the time the season, I'm thinking about by the time this this year, next year, mm -hmm. after the season over, because I'm gonna do the whole season, the whole football season this season. Comes really? Out. Yeah, I'm doing everybody now this oh season. Oh, my God. Every bro. team is getting one this season every single week. And not every team, but, like, I mean, whatever is the hot yes. thing of the week. So n n now I can bring in, you know, the, you know, the Michael Parsons, someone to talk to me. And, you know, no, Michael Parsons, Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Real shot Cowboys out here. Yeah, one shot Cowboys. So. <laughs> uh, he is a nice guy, though. St. Quan, St. Quan, you know, like, all the people, like, you know, can gravitate towards my page. That way I can, you know, get my blue check mark and be able to venture out into new situations and everything. You know, I'm just trying to... Build my brand as much as I possibly can, you know. You ever thought about the sports? Yeah, I'm, I'm because trying. when I started seeing, I was like, imagine so, if you do one with AI, so and they would... the thing. So the thing that make them hit the most, regardless of my, you know, how I talk, uh -huh. the thing that give me my uniqueness compared to like any other people that do like voiceovers is the the tackle effect. I don't know if you ever hear it on the video. Yes, the tackle yes. effect. So I got the tackle effect, which makes it more authentic. Now it's hard to do the rub mic effect. In basketball, yeah. because it's not that much contact, but I can with something like people get banged on. I'm doing one with Blake Griffin for sure. Are you really? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm doing one with Blake Griffin. I'm gonna do one with AI for sure. That's gonna happen. AI, Blake Griffin, uh, um, and B when they get blocks and stuff like that for sure. Yeah, that, that's definitely coming. One thousand percent. Oh um, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I like that. I like that. Let's 1, talk about. So now, of course, obviously, you're funny. You ever do stand up comedy? Yeah, I've done it a couple times. Actually, I done. Should take on it. I like stand-up comedy. I like. Really? I, I don't. I'm not against stand-up comedy. I got a solid, like I want to say, 20, 25 minutes written. 
Really? So, like, I'm always ready for anybody. Everyone's like, yo, you want to do the show? The only thing is I was, what was holding me back was, you know, I was working at, you know, Good Dogs. So exactly. Like, I was working every Friday, Saturday. Most of the time you have a show, it's going to be Friday, Saturday. And it's like, all right, let me pull you off this to work, you know, work this show. And it's like, uh, the show is for free. I'm working a bar right now on a Friday night. Fact. Like Got to make that money. That's $900. I can't, that's, <laughs> I can't just toss that to the side. You know what I mean? So... Um, now with a little bit more freedom, you know, doing like Uber and everything, I could probably, you know, make it to those and like do some more stand up. Cause I like, I like doing stand up. I like the, mm -hmm. you know, I like doing anything that's involved with being able to be creative and like creatively make people laugh. You know what okay. I mean? Like okay. if I can find a way to like, oh, I'm getting at him. I'm getting at him. Like, I, I know that's just stitching him and stitching him and I right. add another one. They go another one. They go another joke. Yeah. They go another one. <laughs> oh my God. So are you going to be the kind of comedian that pretty much just clowns people? What's your thoughts? I think I, I think I could do, but I, I, I pretty much could do both. Like if I find something that's funny and I can clown you on it, yeah, I'm gonna do it. But I mean, I, I think I got material that that's just as funny. I, I think like I can. I like, like, like child to Nicki Minaj, you can't rap and sing on the same CD. The country won't get it. They got ADD. I can do it all. Facts. <laughs> I'm there for that. I can do it all. So now acting. So have yeah. you have you had any experience with acting? Anybody reached out to you? You thought about acting? Um, I've had a couple. Cause of the way you do characters, bro, that, like maybe an avenue. Yeah, I, you might be right. And then like everybody was like, so when I, I don't know if you saw the three, the three hundred in Philly when I did the three hundred. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were saying like, yo, the acting in that was pretty. Cause like you know I had like a little bit of a serious moment in there, and they're like the acting in that was pretty good. So like I never actually like had a, a where I had to like actually act like anything I had to do okay. like on film I had to do like it was like fighting choreographer, you know, I was, okay. like, like a kind of Jet Li character, like you know beat somebody up in a you know what a back okay. scene. Or okay. But I would definitely be. 100% down to explore that venture. If anybody is out there listening to this, if anybody needs me to write anything, I'm, I'm down with the creativity. You get me to be creative in any room, I'm going to be creative, and it's going to be funny. So let's talk about that, creativity. So tell me what else you got working in the works that may be breaking news that people need to find out about. So breaking news, I have a cartoon that is trying to drop as soon as possible. I want to, if I have to give a date, I'm going to say May 1st. Mm. Um, it's called Malik and Peeps. Where One more I, time. Malik and Peeps. So Peeps. Malik with three E's and Peeps with three E's. Okay. Uh, Malik and Peeps. And uh, shout out to Andy Tao. We came up with this idea together and we was working the bar and we we're like, yo, man, we're pretty funny, man. We should probably do something with this. And he he just tried to record people. I'm like, that's kind of illegal. We should just like, maybe, we should <laughs> just, just like, maybe. Yeah, we have maybe illegal just to record people. So we should probably just like, you know, kind of get together and make maybe skits or something. He's like, yo, what if we did a cartoon? I'm like, there's not a lot of cartoons that people just watch for like bartending and like content because like that's like more of an adult kind of thing. Exactly. And I feel like we can grasp the adults with, you know, Adult Swim and everything like that with Malik and Peeps. There's four characters. There's old head young boy and shorty. And there's myself behind the bar. And we got we got something good working. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going to be dropping a preview of the preview mm -hmm. coming soon about what I have coming up for that. That is probably my pride and joy right now. So we see what's going on in Philly with the violence and, you know, the, the young boys, you know, you know, pretty much out of hand or out of pocket, whatever it's called. Yeah. What are some things you think we can be done in Philadelphia to kind of, you know, kind of get these these young boys back for, you know, back into kind of wanting to turn a different direction or for the city, period? Um, I, I think the, the, the people that, well, I don't want to like to put a lot on people that we idolize. Mm -hmm. but, they can also help out because a lot of people idolize the things that are wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's easy to say, to do the bad thing. You know what I'm saying? It's harder to do the good thing, especially when you live in urban areas. It's way easier to do the bad thing than the good thing. So we get these people to, or or just like, you know, open more avenues for activities to be done. Sure. Um, you know, tell people how much, like, oh, I forget his name, but he had this... Uh, his name. He had this, he had this nice program where as though you went out and you like play like different sports, like whether it be like football, soccer, and but the, when you do the activity for the sport, they say you know oh you just lost your credit score just dropped, so now you got to do this. So like it was like uh, how to get you okay. ready for the real world in a in a in a in a way for a 13, 15 year old, sixteen year old to really grasp it and really like the thing is making something worth. Cause like if you don't if you don't have nothing worth to go to go out and get, mm -hmm. it's you're never going to want to go get anything. You're yeah. just going to you know have anything for the spirit of the moment. You got to make things worth it and make things seem obtainable. You know what I mean? Like you know the picket fence and the dog and the and the car. You know what I mean? So if you if you break it down s smaller for these these teachers, the teachers need to be paid more, a lot more to be able to actually because we need LeBrons in the classroom, not LeBrons in the court. Shout out to LeBron, Thanks. but you know what I mean he get paid what he get paid to play a game, but the you know, we 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 worried about the people in our community. If you get the LeBrons of 
the community to be teachers, it'd be a different thing. But you know, you got to up the pay. You know, it's a lot. Of, it's a it's a lot to going on. But you know, you just got to get people together and have fun and do activities that you can also venture into pe- being adults in mm-hmm. some way, shape, or form. Like whether you could do a basketball game and do basketball drills, whereas though you know you oh you just dropped your credit score or oh you just yeah. uh, you just got a loan on a house or you know playing in the you know make, life. Like, make it yeah More like a, life. make a game yeah. of life with basketball <laughs> and I feel like. Hey, Mike, work on that six. Did you hear that? Yeah, I got work on that. Yeah, make work on that. Seriously, get the sixes, get get some of them uh, players out there, yeah. and like, yo, we gonna play this game of basketball. I mean, I know somebody hearing this, they can set it up. But whereas, though, you can set up basketball games like a life game. You know, a layup is uh, your, your, your your weekly pay, and then a, a foul shot is you know your loan or whatever it may be. I, I feel like, like you could put that in a way whereas though people can see it, and if you can see it, you can obtain it. You know what I mean? Mm, facts. And a lot of times, our young people in the urban communities in certain cities don't have many positive faces yeah. or have faces, they, they, they kind of be turned away from looking at certain people. It's about the, the, the athletes or the, the celebrities right. or the rappers. Right. But sometimes it's just they need to be pointed and see. If they see something, I believe children, when they see something, it gives them yeah. a will, gives them a fight and desire. Like you can for me, see it. Right. For me, growing up, no fear, like, you know, people know my sister, I grew up in a house with no heat, no running water. Yeah. And then my grandmother kind of took me in and then, I was searching for role, male role models. Right. And when I start, I remember the first time I touched the basketball, when it really got his jit, was this man that lived near me. He's like, hey, let me teach you basketball. I was like, all right. Yeah. And he started that path for me. And then I went up to him, there was other male role models in my life. And I, I give a shout out to John, guy right so John Harnett, who was a guy named Sonny Hill, who had a big basketball league in Philadelphia. So that was a mentor for me, as well as others. And I have, you know, and then as I got older, I got to high school, a man named Frank Marciano from Marciano's Bakery in yeah. Maniung. Check him out. Shout out to Marciano's Bakery Shout in Maniung. My godfather, Frank Marciano. He pretty much took me under his wing, took me in and said, hey, you know, you know, the most important things in life is? So what? He said, what you say with your words and your actions follow. I said, what you mean? He's like, you ever heard of please and thank you? Right. Like, yeah, I heard it. He said, no, no, no. The importance of please and thank right. you. A lot of people think they're too big to say please or thank you right. or repeat it. And he said, get used to repeating that to people sure. and watch how the doors open. Tell me about some mentors that came in your life. Um, I would have to say my uncle, Juwan, he was definitely a big, a big mentor in my mm-hmm. life. Um, really good friend of mine, Jason Smalls, another really good friend of my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, my head football coach, Eric Zippay from Simon Gratz, still doing his thing, was also a really good mm-hmm. mentor in my life. He was the person that taught me because, like, you know, it's like in, a, in the hood where we grew up, it's like two. It's like either you making it to the NBA or it's not. And it's like he took... He took like the biggest plan. I, you know, I want to go to the NFL. So he took that and was like, man, l- listen, because everybody don't go there. You know what I mean? Like, he opened yeah. up my eyes to every other avenue that I can do. And he's super proud of me. And uh, my uncle, he just always told me two things. He told me two things. Be the best in the room and never give up. And like those two things that I've always stood in my place and saying, like, I'm going to always be the best in the room. Like, no matter what room it is. Like, I check him up right now. He has me to rock. It's like, no. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> no, but yeah, seriously, like you, uh, you got to be the best in the room. You got to, you got to want the effort to be the best. And like you just said, like seeing it, seeing it yeah. is a lot, like being able to see it and being able like to make it happen because you saw it. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's definitely, definitely. And Brian Dawkins too. Shout out to Brian Dawkins. He gave me oh that man. Heck yeah, bro. Yeah, I mean, watching Brian Dawkins on TV just gave me so much passion. Like, I'm like, man, I'm, you got me, you got me. That's why I made that speech for Brett's. Man, bro. <laughs> He's a speech writer too, people. Yeah, He's I a speech writer speech. too. I wrote a speech. Yeah, you need it. He job. got it. Motivation. I got you. So now, but listen, but let's talk about you as a mentor. You you don't yeah. know it, but I, I have three sons. Yeah. And my sons, when I told him I was interviewing Malik, like, what? Like that. We skip basketball practice and come. Like, no, 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 we can't do that, bro. No. no, no, no. <laughs> you know, you go to Roman Catholic. You can't be missing practice. Yeah, shout out to Roman. But yeah. that, <laughs> facts. Go with so, the but you're now a role model. Now yeah. you're following, of course, some of your scenes are adult content, but like yeah. Like the North Pole, like a lot of people can relate to that. So now yeah. you, you see a trend come a lot of young boys coming to you or young people, younger adults or kids kids coming to your content? Yeah, a lot of a lot of young that and that, that, that's exactly why I got two characters in, in, in those videos. Okay. Because it's the character that made it out. He's he's looking at this dude like, oh my God, <laughs> I, can't, I can't do this, man. And, and then you know, you got him because we you can relate that to be like, oh. You can be this guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so I do get a lot of young people that follow me. They might see me on the train or like see me at the block. Like, yo, that was me. I saw you earlier. And I was like, yo, that was crazy. Like, crazy story. I was in Jersey. And like, I, you know, I, sometimes I forget, like, you know, like people like know me or whatever. Yeah. And like, you know, I'm in, I'm at like this race car track and he's, I'm talking little kids. They had to be like seven, eight. Like, yo, you the guy. I'm like, yo. Really? This, 
came up to me. I'm talking. I'm in Jersey, not thinking that's even a thing. Like you mean, like I'm all the way in Speedway. Like I had no, yeah. I, like you know, I was having a good time for my birthday. Like you know, whatever. And these kids just ran up to me. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like so, yeah, I definitely got to be careful with that with the influence that I bring too. You know what I mean? But like this is this is the reason why I'm saying this to the camera right now. Like, hear me, listen to me. Like you know what I mean? Because there's a way out for sure. And just be the best in the room. In any room you step in, just be the best. You can, it's so easy to be the best. It is, man. It your is. motivation and your your motivation to other people. Now, so there's so many different platforms for social media. Yeah. You know, you monetize so well TikTok and Instagram. Do, tell me, are those your two main ones? Do you start to venture out the other ones, Twitter or anything else? Or whatever two? So, ones? like, I do a little bit on Twitter. I don't do that much on Twitter because mm -hmm. it's, like, more of Twitter's, like, something, like, what do you have to say right now? You know what I'm saying? I feel okay. like, I feel like... I could be wrong, but I feel like the people that have already established themselves on have like the heard that like the biggest voice. So it's it's kind of hard to like kind of just like hop on Twitter and just like be this voice that people are gonna grasp to mm -hmm. because what I do is visual. Now, sure, I could do it and like put it out there and make it happen, but I, I would have to get a lot big, bigger on Twitter for the impact to actually hit. Because there's some tweets that I got that are fire. But really? Like, I don't have no following. So, like, people are just like, ah, right, whatever. Like, I told this girl I wanted her to love me like white people love pumpkins. <laughs> that's hilarious. Like, <laughs> that would, if, if I was if I was LeBron James, that's a million retweets. Like, <laughs> that's a million retweets. Thanks. So, which one do you prefer, though? So, uh, TikTok, because you said, I think okay. I read you, you're big, you, you bigger on TikTok because you just started... I'm putting a lot more on Instagram. So, like, I'm bigger on TikTok for sure. TikTok has a wide range of uh, their uh, how they how they how they get you to watch the videos. So they have a okay. really wide range. So, like, I'm getting a wide range of of like fans from all over the place with TikTok. TikTok just pays less. So, like, and then they're more strict with the rules. You know what I'm saying okay. like, you know, all my stuff is not PG. So yeah. it's like kind of I, I kind of like you know kind of dibble a dabble with the the TikTok. But TikTok gave me the 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 platform that reached so many people and then Instagram just kind of just amplified it because like really? Instagram, it's really concentrated on who you get in these videos too. Like that's how AJ Brown found me was Instagram. You know what uh, I mean? So like AJ Brown found me on Instagram and he saw it or whatever and then after that it's like, you know, it's more condensed and then they also pay more. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. So what, what advice would you give to somebody who's trying to start a, 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 not just get a following on social media but to also use that platform to kind of put a message out or to become to pretty much become themselves or, or be free and kind of pro progress what they're trying to do already what advice would you give um i would give you a couple couple words of advice because i was doing this for a lot like a lot of people don't know i was doing this for a long time before i actually got big like i was doing like the, that first bartender video yeah. or something about that was five years ago when it when, wow. it when it when it went crazy you know what i'm saying like so i've been doing this for a minute the thing where I where I messed up at, I was doing what I thought people wanted to hear. I wasn't being myself. And that's how the whole North Pole and everything kind of like uh. I started being myself. So one, I would say be yourself. Like let your your whole essence just come through in your videos because nobody wants to see what they want you to be. People Ooh. want you to see you, you. when they come to see you. Mm -hmm. So be yourself, one thousand percent. Two, stay consistent. Stay consistent on top of it. Like Treat it like it's a job. Like, like, uh, like people be mad at me because I'm like, you know, I gotta go to work and then I'm going, I gotta make a video. Like, you don't gotta do that. Yeah, I gotta do that because it's gonna pay me one day. I gotta do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm, I dropped the video every day for the last two years. Like, go look at the post, 5,000. How many years is that? <laughs> Add it up. So, uh, be consistent, be yourself. And, what I hate to say, be you could be a little trendy. You gotta be a little trendy sometimes. Sometimes right. you gotta be a little trendy. So what I do is I like to give you two originals and one trendy every. So two originals, one day original, one day original. And if I ain't really got nothing, so it's so easy to me for me to do lip syncs. I just do a trend. You know I mean, but most of the time I'm giving out original content. But definitely you gotta throw a trend in there because okay. people want to see trendy stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. Now make sure so everybody know because we know Malik. I want to make sure the world knows, Malik. Tell me, how can they find you if they want to book you for things, they want to get in touch with you? How to, what is the best way to do that? So the best way to find me, to book me for anything, is right on my social media platforms, at The Real Malik Joe. I'm at The Real Malik Joe on every single platform. Um, you, just, you can either slide in my DMs or use the uh, email address that's right on there, malikjoe1 at yahoo.com. Um, I'm even the real Malik Joe on Call of Duty if you ever want to get smoked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Over at camping. <laughs> um, no, nah, but yeah, hit me up on social media in any way, shape, or form. I'm here to write, to act, to improv. 
I actually just got an improv gig not too long ago. Hell yeah. Yeah, like uh, April 16th. Whoa, give us information. Oh, yeah. Uh, improv gig, April 16th. Um, It's called John and... Nah, don't make me quote that wrong, but Maniac Malloy. Shout out to Maniac Malloy and yeah. Bet Parks. They set me up with it. Um, We're going to go ahead and do that. Um, They're trying to open up a lot of avenues. I might be actually on a podcast with Dumphy and Ed Bassmaster. Oh. Not about that, sorry. Okay. Yeah, we might be doing something with Bet Parks. Okay. Hopefully that that falls through. Uh, that's the avenue I want to be in, man. Like I feel happy doing stuff like this. I feel yeah, like, I feel like I'm at home. You know what I mean? Not to say like you know, not if our jobs are not you know where mm-hmm. it's at, but this is where I feel that like I, I I know this is the this is the calling. This is the, the creativity that I got in my brain. Like I'm at all times just talking to myself. <laughs> you know, I'm you like a crazy person, man. I'm. This is it. Like so, yes. stay consistent. Well, what we're gonna do right now here, people, is we he's gonna give his all-time five for the 76ers, as well as me, we're going to do a draft style. Okay. Okay, because we're funny like, people. Like That's it. what we do. We're going to do NBA here. So I'm going to give Malik Joe the honor. We're getting number one pick for this all-time Sixers squad. Allen Iverson. Well, that's kind of cheating. You can't do that because you wear the jersey. Like, that's like contrast. You know, really? He went with AI. Uh, if I go with my first pick, I'm going to give me Joel and B. I'm cheating because I'm, I was a pair, so I'm a little bit cheating. Oh, I cheat. Oh, I'm a little bit you got freestyle. Will Chamberlain. Well, hold on now. <laughs> no, no, no. What? Now I'm going to tell you why. Because I got to think for that. I got to think for that because they say Will, he played for, he played for six. You got to go. Sixers. But like his stats, a lot of his stats, they said don't really count because they was the Warriors and they moved to Golden State. So it's a whole uh, But you know what? I'll give you that. Will got to see what out. No, 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 no. Because right. I got mine. He, <laughs> give me Charles Barkley. The Doc and Shady. Oh, you okay. The Doctor. You got Doc. You got Doc. All right, so you got AI. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for my point now. Give me the bearded one, James Harden. So I got Joel, Charles, and I got James Harden. I'm going J.J. Reddick. <laughs> Go on, JJ Reddick. Jay, Jay, Jay. What is he? Sixty from the jaw. Oh is he? my god! Sixty from the high. You old JJ. Oh my god! Come on. You know what I mean? But James needs a cope. Give me one of the best point guards in the six uniform. Give me Mo Cheeks. Mm. Mo Cheeks. Mo Cheeks. Mo Cheeks. I mean, I'm just saying. There's a lot of great sixes out there. Of course, I'm not being biased. I ain't say myself. But we're going to leave that alone. We're going to just skip over that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, got you. I got Bo Cheeks. I got James. I got Charles Barkley. I got Joel. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go Daryl Dawkins, right? Ooh. I'm going to go Daryl Dawkins. Mm-hmm. I got a bounce squad. Okay, but you know what, though? I'm a big fella, so I'm biased. So I was... Okay, you know what, though? I'm going to go my boy Iggy with the swiggy. Give me Ooh, Andre, yeah, Andre, Andre Iggy with dollar. I forgot about Iggy. Andre, I forgot Iggy. About Iggy. Three. I'm going Andre. So I got a complete team. I got Mo Cheeks. I got James. Andre Iggy with like Charles Barkley, and Joel Embiid. Yeah, and you got... I got the Will, Silk, Doc, Allen, uh, Daryl, JJ. JJ. I think my squad. I don't what know. y'all think, JJ people? from the art. Hit us up. Hit us up. Let us know. Hit us on social media. Talking about Hit us up. <laughs> 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 Whose squad is better at all times? He's Malik Joe squad or Mark Jackson squad. Remember the Malik Joe and the Mark Jackson. Yes. On Instagram, I'm also Jacko2544 on, on Twitter and on TikTok. Hit us up. Thank you yeah. for us again, brother. Oh, Let's yeah. get it in. Hell yeah. Appreciate you, brother. Yes, I sir. Think my squad wins. Check us out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>